Behind in the polls, Donald Trump is looking for a bit of help from the man upstairs. And with serious question marks over how much he pays in taxes, the President made sure he dropped a few notes in the collection plate. Keen eyes calculating, he handed over eight $20 bills. The President receiving a blessing from the pastor at the International Church of Las Vegas. Mr. President, Trump, you're not a guest in this house. You've been here, this is your third time. So your family, your family, you stand your hands me, family, family knows how to worship God. The Lord said he is ready for the next four years, and I'm getting him a second wind, understand? And there's also this, a second wind, if you add D, it's the Holy Spirit. Mr. President, we bless you. Lift up your hands and extend. President Trump attended church with political advisor Hope Hicks and White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McInerney. It's estimated three quarters of all Americans practice Christianity or another form of religion. <laughs> Joe Biden, meantime, attended services in Wilmington, where he also privately visited the grave of his son, Beau Biden. Mr Trump stayed in Nevada, where he's holding his latest rally. The streets lined with Trump supporters as he headed there today. The state voted Democrat last time out. Yesterday, Mr Trump was in Michigan, where his comments about the state's governor, the recent target of a kidnap plot, whipped up a storm. You got to get your governor to open up your state, okay? And then I guess uh, they said she was threatened, right? She, she was threatened. And she blamed me. She blamed me. And our people were the ones that worked with her people. So let's see what happens. But she would go out and say, great. Very happy. This, I said, is there anything else you want, Governor? No, we have everything. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it on behalf of Michigan. Very good. And then she'd go out and badmouth me. I mean, it's incredible. It's so dishonest. Right? It's so dishonest. But anyway, hopefully you'll be sending her back in pretty soon. It's incredibly disturbing that the President of the United States, 10 days after a plot to kidnap, put me on trial and execute me, 10 days after that was uncovered, the president is at it again and inspiring and in incentivizing and um, inciting this kind of domestic terrorism. It is wrong. It's got to end. It is dangerous, not just for me and my family, but for public servants everywhere who are doing their jobs and trying to protect their fellow Americans. People of goodwill on both sides of the aisle need to step up and call this out and bring the heat down. This is the United States of America. We do not tolerate actions like he is giving comfort to, and that's why we all have to be in this together. Whitmer also attacking his handling of COVID-19. I do think that the person with the biggest megaphone bears a lot of responsibility here. It's true. This is a public health crisis. It should not be a partisan moment, and yet he has made it that way to deflect from his administration's inability to get their arms around it. Yeah, so last night the president talked about lockdowns. We haven't had a stay home order since late spring, but I know that he never lets the facts get in the way of comments that he's making. Every moment that we are not focused on the fact that there are 220,000 Americans who have died from this virus is good for him. So in that sense, as he incites additional violence against people who are just trying to save one another's lives, it's good for him. And that's why I don't want to talk about him endangering public servants' lives. I want to talk about what he hasn't done, and that's his job. The Trump virus response is the worst in the globe. I mean, in the world, it's the worst. The president's daughter-in-law leapt to his defense. My question is, shouldn't everybody just tone it down, including your, your father-in-law? Well, look, this is, he wasn't doing anything, I, I don't think, to provoke people to threaten this woman at all. He was having fun at a Trump rally. And quite frankly, there are bigger issues than this 
right now for everyday Americans. People want to get the country reopened. They want to get back to work. Not only are we trying to, to make it through a pandemic, but think about all of the, the cancers that have gone unaddressed. Think about the kids that aren't in school who use school to get their one meal a day. Jake. Sure, of course. There are issues at hand here that are bigger than, than just keeping everybody locked down. So I think people are frustrated. And look, the president was at a rally. It's a fun, light atmosphere. Of course, he wasn't encouraging people to threaten mm -hmm. this woman. That's ridiculous. Mr. Trump also facing rare criticism from his own side at the weekend. Nebraska Senator Ben Sass joining Mitt Romney and John Komen in breaking ranks. This audio call to his constituents obtained by David Drucker of the Washington Examiner. The way he kisses dictators' butts. I mean, the way he um, ignores that the Uyghurs are in literal concentration camps in Xinjiang right now. He hasn't lifted a, a finger on behalf of the Hong Kongers. I mean, he and I have a very different foreign policy. It isn't just that he fails to lead our allies, it's that we, the United States now regularly sells out our allies under his leadership. The way he treats women and spends like a, a drunken sailor, the ways I criticize President Obama for that kind of spending, I've criticized President Trump for as well. He mocks um, evangelicals behind closed doors. His, his family has treated the presidency like a business opportunity. He's flirted with white supremacists. The president wasn't impressed. He tweeted, the least effective of our 53 Republican senators and a person who truly doesn't have what it takes to be great is little Ben Sass of Nebraska, a state which I have gladly done so much to help. Republican National Committee Chair Ronna McDaniel wheeled out to back the president. You've now got several Republican senators, Lindsey Graham saying he's concerned that Joe Biden is going to win. Tom Tillis saying that you need a Republican Senate to be a, a check on a potential uh, President Biden. You've seen these comments from Susan Collins and from Ben, ben Sass. Are you starting to see Republican senators running on a separate track from President Trump? I'm not. I think all of them have been running those similar races along. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I am seeing more enthusiasm than I saw in 2016. I study the data every day. We know that our voters are going to turn out on uh, election day. They don't trust mail-in balloting as much. Uh, they are getting out in these early vote states right now. We want them to get out. We want them to turn in their absentee votes. But we are seeing this huge energy, and we are seeing uh, really great numbers coming out for the president. And this is a race. And any Republican that doesn't recognize that running with the president is going to help them is hurting themselves in the long run.